How you going? What's up, people? So uh, today we got a tier list for the TV2 bracket for you for WrestleDruid. Uh, I know I get this question asked so much, so I wanted to make an updated video. I did make one in the past, but we're gonna make an updated video on the best twos comps for WrestleDruid. Um, and just keep in mind, this is my personal, kind of more my personal preference from what I, how I play. Um, I'm gonna give insight in all ways, um, but. You know, you may be able, you may probably swap some of these tiers around slightly if you're playing more defensive. But when you're playing offensive, this is going to be my go-to. All right. So we'll go through each class. I'll put them through. Try to give you maybe some little tips here and there on how to play that comp if I can. And uh, yeah, we'll get to it. All right. So first class we got up here. Let me move my camera down actually a little bit so you can see. Um, we got Affliction Warlock. So Affliction Warlock. They definitely, you know, in beta they were phenomenal. I had them at S tier. Um, and then, but, you know, beginning at Shadowlands Season 1 started, you know, Melee was just kind of running them over a little bit, but I think they're starting to pick back up. I think in the end, this is a, you know, to play this comp very well, I'm going to say that it can be placed into an S tier. Alright, because it's a very reliant on the Warlock though. Um, if you guys, any guys watched my last video, you can apply so much pressure, and I was like talking about kind of talking through this comp. Uh, but the Warlock has to be on their, on their game when it comes to using defensives. Whether it's gating, porting, you know, wall, coils, spheres, all that stuff. Because, you know, you have the big melee classes like Reds, Windwalkers, and whatnot that, uh, that they pump, man. So you got to be able to rotate their cooldowns well and make sure you guys are communicating well. But I think if played perfectly, it is going to be in an S tier comp. Because you can just apply so much pressure, especially as an aggressive druid. You can capitalize on all of their, you know, people, them, them dispelling UAs, them getting Dark Lairs out, stunning them in their lines so they can get free UAs and keep up those UAs at the whole game. You know, as long, as long as you live like the first five minutes or so, bam, game's over. All right. And I see some crazy, I haven't, I haven't played with any like rank one crazy, crazy good locks, um, but I did play against Channimals quite a bit in twos. And I have never seen anyone do his type of damage, but he, I like, he was. I think when I played him, he killed my guy in like about one minute. I don't even know how he did it, but you know, if you can, if the locks can, you know, work, learn to, you know, play up to that level or to, you know, somewhat of that level, um, I think it's got a lot of potential. All right, next up, we got Arcane Mage. Um, I'm gonna again put this in the S tier. This is the comp I play the most, most likely. If you guys see it at higher rating, um, I think this comp just works so well uh, because you have the tankiness of an Arcane Mage. The mobility of an Arcane Mage to kite warriors, rets, uh, DKs, all those like crazy melee that you see a lot. Um, and they can put out some crazy good damage if they know what they're doing. All right. You know, it's not the easiest class to play. Again, you know, I feel like a lot of these S tier class comps are going to be not the easiest to play. But if you can develop the synergy between you and your teammate, whether, whether it's like poly, uh, you know, I, I typically try to go, we do, we do add a mass and viz stealth poly twice, and then I swap it to a clone, and then I stun. And then I swap the clone to the other target, and then we poly again. And the, the healer can never play. Um, that's ideally what goes on. So, uh, but that comp I think is phenomenal. S tier, you guys have seen so many videos of me playing that. I don't think I need any more to explain on that one. Um, next up, we got Arms Warrior. Um, Arms Warrior. I'm gonna put it. What else we got here? I'm gonna put it as a super. This is kind of sus, but. I want to say like a low A tier, high B tier. The only reason that I would not see like a solid A, a comp is just the fact that th this comp ain't bad. All right, just looking at you know in retrospect, there's the Warrior Dress Druid is a good comp. Um, it has everything you kind of would need. You have pretty good healing. You got the mobility. The Warrior's got so much defensives. Um, they got support for you. The only thing is that Warrior Dress Druid sucks against any other warrior comp like if it's warrior disc warrior paladin warrior this that whatever it may be um and other other pal just paladins in general i should say you know when from i, I talk about my stream all the time melee melee ardruid is worse than every single h palette melee it's just kind of how it is uh ardruid does seem to work better with casters but in you know in general the comp is good so i guess i'll still put it in a tier but the only problem is, you know, especially playing higher rating, like all you're facing is H pal, H pal Windwalker, H pal, you know, Fire Mage, H pal this, H pal that, and it's just kind of makes the comp a little bit tougher. If H pal wasn't this strong, this comp could be flourish a lot better. All right, so uh, and moving on next, one, we got Assassination Rogue. Um, I'll put it at B tier. I feel like I feel like we don't really know 
kind of like not really, not really hard to tell how good that comp would be. I would not put it as an A tier. I don't think I'd put it that bad either though, just because of Rogue's ability control. You rarely ever see like high rated Rogue's playing assassination in twos, but I definitely would kind of feel like assassination is better than sub playing with the rest of Druid. But we'll see. I did play with one, one or two viewers that play with Assassination Rogue, and the pressure felt pretty good actually. It felt way, it felt way better than playing with sub, to be honest. So um, I think kind of a, kind of an uneducated uh, pick here because we just don't see it that much. Um, it's a tank, BM Hunter. I'm um, gonna put it. I kind of want to say, I'm gonna put like an upper B tier. All right, Hunter, Hunter Druid is pretty good. Like, I mean, in, in, you know, in his history repeats itself, it's very good between traps. It's kind of similar to Mage and the fact that you can just kind of like trap into clone and, you know, make the healer not play the game basically. But the problem is with BM is that pets die and rest of Druids can't keep pets up. It's it's too much to handle to keep up pets and the player um, with Windwalkers being so prominent, Warriors being so prominent, Rets, things like that, they, they just AOE shred pets. So I think it has potential to be like a like an A tier if it's like they're playing very very well. But I want to put it like an upper B, probably like the top B tier most likely here. Um, but yeah, if you want to just cycle through traps and uh, pretty much any hunter Druid comp is gonna be just cycle through traps and clones to make sure the healer's not even playing the game. Uh, Boomy, <laughs> I'm gonna put it at B tier. I'll put it like I'm gonna put it in front of this. Can I just switch these? There we go. I'll put it right there. Um, <laughs> Generally, this comp is pretty trash. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But the fact that Boomy is as strong as it is kind of makes it work. Um, you know, you can just press, you just, Boomy is just that strong that you can get away with it. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, skew the results of this tier list by giving it a higher rating. Cause I feel like you may, a super geared Boomy, you could probably put this in an A tier comp. But in general, this comp is not very good. You have, don't really have any synergy. Um, it's, it just doesn't feel good. Boomy in twos with the healer that's not an H pal never really felt that good because you don't have like the Hodges on demand, the you know the bops, the ore masteries, stuff like that. So um, not much to say about that. You, I mean, you could probably get away with doing a little bit better with this comp if you just really gear and you press convoke or you know you just get massive star surges. But yeah, all right. So demo lock next. Um, I'm gonna put it as a B tier as well. I, again, this is kind of an uneducated pick. Not enough demo locks out there, but I do feel like demo lock could be kind of insane with the rest of Druid. Um, I really would like to play. I don't. I've never played this yet in Shadowlands, but just by speculation, I would still put it as a B tier. I think a very good demo lock could pump pretty dang hard, especially with my playstyle, because my playstyle would you know deter them from running so much. And if you could like synergize your set, like your stuns with his with the tyrant, vortex it, make sure they stay in the line. I think that comp could actually have some potential. So um, I feel like I feel like I could definitely put this as a B tier. Um, next up, we got Destro Lock. I'm putting Destro Lock as A tier. I haven't played with too many Destros, but um, I think it's still phenomenal, man. I, I think even a very good Destro, you might even I might even argue to put it as an S. But you know, in general, I'm gonna put it down at a at an uh, A tier. I mean, you have the same, you have insane damage still, the peels. Mostly the peels. That's the biggest thing. You have infernal damage is really high. You have infernal stun, shadow fear, coil fear. Um, so much stuff to support. And just make sure if you're playing this comp, just like aft lock, you want to set up your lock. If your lock has damage, you're vortexing them in line. You're stunning them in line. You're just helping them out it's because it, 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 you know the biggest weakness of Destro lock is just run. They run away, right? Or aft lock, they just run away. So if you can try to do your best to prevent them from running away, like being on top of them, you know, stunning them and stuff like that, you can get really far with this comp, I think. Uh, next up, we got Ellie. Hmm. I'm gonna put Ellie. I'm gonna put it at A, upper A. All right, just because I initially, I think in the in my last my last tier list, I put I put Ellie up at uh, I put it in an S tier. But the thing right now, I did play this comp once or twice. It did felt pretty good. Like it, like it should be, you know, in, in theory, this comp should actually be so awesome between, you know, uh, Hex Lasso and then you have Stun Clones, swapping clones back and forth. The thing is, Ellie is kind of rough against these melee. The, you know, the melee meta, it's, uh, you're playing a class that's just not the best. 1v1 into a melee meta, it just kind of gets a little rough. So, you know, you got a warrior training the Ellie the whole game. It just becomes very hard to heal as a druid. 
um, over time. Maybe with an LED H comp might be a little better. Uh, but I think the comp still has potential. Uh, I'm still going to put it as an A tier. I, li I still like the comp a lot. Um, okay, next up we got Enhance. Hmm, enhance, I'm going to put... I'm going to put it as a C tier. Right, I'm going to put it as C tier. Okay, this reason... So Enhance really isn't that bad, I think. I think, especially with the off healing. But I think if the healing gets tuned, this comp would be terrible. Um, you know, all you would have was damage. If you can't kill with damage, because I mean, you can get, you can rotate hexes, but if they have a hexes spell, um, there kind of goes the whole comp. I did play this. I did play this a few times with um, with viewers. It didn't go that bad, but it, the only games that went really well were the hex ones. So like, if you if you're playing against paladins or dis priests, and they don't have a mage or a druid on their team, it actually did go pretty well between hexes and clones and stuff like that. Um, but you know. In general, I think this comp really doesn't have like any synergy. It's just kind of do damage, and you really can't play offensively when you're playing with enhance. Um, outside of maybe like hero goes, but yes, yeah, so it doesn't really you know complement playing aggressive. So I'm gonna keep it down at C. Uh, Feral. Uh, I'm gonna put Feral as like an upper. I'm gonna put it as upper upper B tier here. This comp I definitely think is better than Boomy because you have a lot more setups, right? The problem with Boomy is you can't really set anything up. It's just kind of, here comes your damage. You, know, you can root beam, I guess, but you know, having Feral is more consistent damage, plus those gnarly, especially a Kyrian Feral, and you can combine that with your damage as the rest of the Druid as well. You can put out some serious pressure, and on top of that, very, very mobile between you know you and the uh, rest of Druid and Feral Druid. If you guys play well, like you know you do your, you do your big go, and then you just run it out, wait for the next big go, do it again, do it again, and just rinse and repeat. You guys are very mobile with a lot of off healing. Um, I think very. I think this comp could actually do pretty dang well. Uh, next we got Fire Mage. I'll put Fire Mage as a low A tier. Uh, I'd probably put it still as better as Fire, better than Warrior. Um, so Fire Mage, R Druid. <sighs> Fire Mage is amazing. Obviously, you guys all probably know that by now. Fire Mage is just disgusting combustion. So I mean, I just there's no way you could put it any lower than an A tier. I think doesn't matter what the healer is to be honest. Uh, but the only downside of this compared to like Arcane or Frost is that you have DB to worry about, you know. DB is a crucial component of um, a Fire Mage and, you know, DB also DR Cyclone. So if you DB Sheet, you can't, or Dragon's Breath, Dragon's Breath, uh, you cannot clone the target at full duration. So that is a very big flaw of the comp. And it does feel kind of clunky. Like when I played, when I played with Fire Mage, I, try, I just try to tell them not to DB. Like, just go for Sheeps. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you just cast more fire and then you go for it again. All right, and I'll try to maybe stun him. I'll try to bash the target to help him set him up. Doesn't have to DB um, and things like that. But you know, with combustion in the end, combustion is just disgusting. So you can kind of make it work. Uh, next up, we got Frost Mage. Frost Mage, I'm gonna put at. Uh, I'm still gonna put it at a Warrior. I think. I think all these casters are gonna be better than Warrior to be honest. Um, but okay, so a Frost Mage. Just kind of lacking on the damage, you know. The reason I could still put it as an A tier is just a simple fact of the CC. You know, the, the synergy between Cyclone and Polymorph is just too good. You know, if you just play it right, the healer doesn't play the game, and it just works so well, no matter how bad the damage might be. But Frost, Frost isn't that that bad, but it's definitely lacking behind Arcane and Fire, in my opinion. So I'm gonna put it as a kind of a lower end A tier. Uh, DK, Frost DK. I'm gonna put Frosty K. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put it in between. Ah, I'm gonna put it down here. All right, I'm gonna put it right there in the B tier. The reason I'd, I'd put pick Frosty K in B tier <clears throat> is because their damage is really good right now. Like their burst, I should say. Their burst is really strong. Um, and then you know if you can combine vortexes with like blind, like I know, I'm pretty sure a typical Frosty K setup is like they grip. And they pop their like on their limb thing that they your necrolore thing that they grip even more, and then they pop their blinding sheep disorient thing. And then they uh, use the whatever that Sinjagosa, and then chill shriek. And then if you could vortex on top of that and stun on top of that um, on a target, I think you could actually cop it really well. But outside of those goes, definitely the flaw of this comp would be defensiveness. Um, DKs can't help you, man. Like I, I mean, he can he can change the ice you. But if you're playing against casters and they they swap to you, nothing this guy can, nothing the DK can really do, you know. Um, so it, it can be okay, but I don't think it's that good, and I wouldn't really recommend it as it compared to a lot of these casters. 
Uh, next up, Fury Warrior. Um, I'm just gonna throw it down here, man. I don't even, I don't even know if there's a place for this class in PvP right now. Um, it's got, it's got a lot of things good that Warrior has. It just does not have Sharpen or Mortal Strike. You know, the healing reduction. That's just a huge deal. Um, I definitely don't see it as good as Enhance. So I'm gonna keep it down to the tier. I don't think there's any comments I need to make on that. Um, Havoc DH. It's like I'm stacking this tier up a little bit much. <laughs> I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna figure. I want to move. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put it here. I feel like if I were to reorganize this, I feel like I'd put Demo a little higher than Rogue, and I definitely put DH in front of those two. I put DH actually here. I'll put this one here. Hey, no. All right, I'm gonna reorder this like there. All right, Demon Hunter B tier. Not that bad. Um, I think a very geared Demon Hunter can actually pump really hard. Um, but they die pretty quickly. And again, H Pals, kind of rough against H Pals. Not the worst, not the worst comp. I've played it quite a bit. Um, you know, with a very good DH, it can do pretty dang well. But keyword, geared. If you're geared, it works pretty well. I mean, this is gonna be kind of the case with a lot of classes, but if you're geared, it works very well. If you're not geared, uh can be kind of rough. All right, next up we have Marksman Hunter. Um, Marksman Hunter. I feel like I feel like I want to put it up here, man. Nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. Marksman Hunter is great. CC could be great. Tough thing is trying to get good setups you because the Marksman Hunter kind of needs your help to get setups sometimes when it comes to using traps. You know, a good healer will pretty much always be able to avoid the traps outside of, you know, stuns. So if you can stun it in the trap, it's really good, but then you're also losing that stun on the kill target potentially. Uh, Marksman Hunter damage is still good. I think just again, synergy between trapping and cloning could make this comp do very well. I do, I do see it uh, better than maybe some of these other comps. Fire Mage can be more gimmicky and, you know, work out, but. In general, I think I think Barksman Hunter could probably do pretty dang well with you know, your you guys' ability to kite and whatnot. A lot of damage still too. Uh, Outlaw Rogue, I'm putting that down C. But Outlaw Rogue, it's got everything that Rogue has, but definitely I don't see it as good as Assassination. And definitely, no, I would not put that. I wouldn't put it as low as D tier. So it still has all the utility of a Rogue, right? You have your. Um, I just don't think that it probably. I don't know if it has the damage to uh, you know supplement Russell Druid. You know, usually like, you know, Outlaw will probably work pretty well with the Disc Priest, to be honest. And we have a lot of supplemental, like, consistent damage. So I think I'm gonna keep it down to the C tier. Uh, Red Paladin. Um, Red Paladin, I'm gonna put definitely right here. Okay, I think a Red is definitely better than a Warrior. Um, just because of the damage and I think, I, I think this is a sleeper pick, man. I haven't played with like an insane Red. But I think with Rest Druid, what you do, what you should do to play this comp is play it like you're playing with a mage. And you go for hot, like he, he Hodge, um, Hodge reps, and then you clone. And then you can, and then you can swap the clone. And then just, you know, you stun the kill target then at that point. And you can get some massive goes, you know, if you, you, you do that once with wings, you get two, one or two trinkets. You do it again, maybe you kill him. Um, I think this is a sleeper pick. I feel like people don't play this comp as well as it could be. I think if you really optimize playing with the Wrestle Druid, it would be playing Repentance and getting Hodge reps on the healer um, with, um, and then with following up with Cyclones. I think it could be really good. But again, I think the casters are probably still better in that case. Uh, Shadow Priest, uh, I'm gonna put Shadow Priest as a little S tier here. So Shadow Priest, the only rough thing, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put him like this. All right, this comp is, I think, phenomenal, right? I mean, this was my S tier. This was an S tier comp, my other tier list. The only issue right now is that there are so many warriors on the ladder, right? Warriors are really hard for Shadow Priest. If I'm still gonna put up here, even though there are, even though that is the case. So, I mean, you might not see crazy amount of S priests um, up that high, but in general, this comp is phenomenal. I think it's got everything you need. You got this, you got the big strong defensives, the off healing, um, stun silence with mind games on top of Convoke. Um, and my dad and like you know being aggressive I think yes I think it's just a great comp the only issue I've come into contact with is just there's so many warrior H pals H pals have shadow resistance aura which kind of makes it kind of brutal um, but and warriors just make it hard too but outside of the warrior um, the warriors and H pals uh, warrior H pals comps I mean H pal wind is probably tough too but to, besides those two comps it's really not too bad and I think you could do really well I'm gonna put up an S tier as well uh, sub rogue sub rogue I'm gonna put 
I'm gonna put low on the speed tier. I like, I like, I kind of want to believe that. I mean, this is kind of, yeah. I mean, you could probably make these interchanges, but I feel like a Sashination Rogue will probably work better than Sub Rogue with the rest of Druid right now. Um, even though Sub, you know, we all know how, how Sub Rogue is. I feel like it could do better. There would be, I think I, you could make, or you could argument the case if the Druid is doing that much damage and the Rogue kind of plays like Rogue Mage esque and like, you know, he's just going for saps and stuff like that and caring more about CC than damage. Maybe you can get somewhere with it, but I think in general, Assassination should probably do better than Sub with, uh, um, with Rest of Druid. I think, it, you know, with Sub Rogue with any other healer would be better than Assassination. But I think with, uh, you know, the consistent damage, I think you're going to have to go with Assassination over that. But um, obviously, I'm not a big fan of Rogue or Druid in general, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, Survival Hunter? I'm gonna put Survival Hunter. I'll put it low. I'm gonna put it low A's here. I definitely think it's better than BM. I think it's better than these comps in general. Again, the problem you got your pet, right? But this, the synergy between Trap and Clone, kind of hard to come by. I think I feel like Survival would stop would definitely be, still be up at a low A tier compared to these classes. A lot of I think I think where you're if you guys could you know, looking back and look at this, you're kind of seeing that like comps that could just do a lot of damage are just kind of getting chunked in here, like. Feral can just do a lot of damage with you. Boomy can just do a lot of damage. DH can just do damage. Demo have probably a little more setup, but Frost DK, Rogue, just do damage, right? Um, these comps kind of have a little more synergy related to it, I think. Ret, Ret you can, and Warrior can maybe argue. I think they're just strong classes at the moment. But, you know, when it comes to the topper end, it's more like just setups. If, you can, if your comp has synergy with setups, I think you can do a lot better. Um, next up, we got uh, uh, Unholy DK. I'm going to Unholy DK down here. I don't think it's as good as Frost right now in twos. I definitely think it's okay. It's like in general, it's not that bad. But again, I, I, it, it felt really hard to heal, and it felt like the, the DK can't help you out at all. Like if you get in trouble, the DK is just kind of like doing damage. He can grip, he can change ice, but that ain't stopping a red. That ain't stopping a you know. I don't even know what other what other classes like casters, especially. There's nothing they can do to help you out. So that's like a big issue with the comp. So I'm gonna keep it down at a C tier. Uh, Windwalker. I'm gonna put Windwalker in A tier. I'm gonna probably put it. I'm gonna put it here. I think it's better than. I think it, you can get better than some of these comps. Um, just because of how strong Windwalker is, and a really good one that can you know play with pour, like porting out and you know playing really good with their defensives, you could really get far with Windwalker. But again, the Windwalker's got to be good with their defensives. If, if they're just sitting in there pressing their cooldowns and hoping to win every game, like they'll win most of their games, but they're not gonna win all those games. At some point, it becomes a fact that you have to be smart with your defensives and, you know, when to port. I've versed in like 2,300 plus Windwalkers that just throw Karma just because they want to do more damage. Like, things like that won't fly at higher, uh, when you're playing, playing with the rest of Druid as much. You know, playing Pally, you might probably get away with it, but um, you got to play smart, I think, more so with the rest of Druid. And make sure you're using your defenses really well, but it definitely, had, definitely has a lot of potential. Um, and that looks like the last one there. All right, so that was, this is kind of the overall list. Um, this is kind of where I'd put everything. I like this. Uh, some of these, a, this AB mix is kind of a little weird. I definitely think this upper A tier is way better than kind of like everything else. Like these, like Warrior, Ret, just kind of, I really think Ret might have potential to set up, but even Warrior, the reason Warrior is an A and not a B, more so is the Intervene, I think. I think Intervene is just so huge. Without Intervene, I think this is down in B. Um, yeah, I like this setup here. So this is kind of how my matchup, my, you know, my preference. Um, again, it's just subjective to me. Uh, if you know, if you have a different opinion, uh, be sure to let me know. And uh, I haven't played all these comps either, so it's kind of hard to get the best opinion. Like some of these lower tier comps, I've never even played these. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video with some tier lists, because um, I get this question asked all the time. So let me know what you guys want to see next also. And uh, have a great day. Thank you for watching, and make sure you like and subscribe if you like the video. Tell your friends too. Peace.